Hey guys, Music Man here back with another Identity 5 video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you more of my Bloody Pink gameplay, as well as I'm going to be doing some commentary of my gameplay. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so the first match I'm going to show you guys is on Leo's Memory. Um, uh, I think Leo's Memory is a pretty alright map. Um, not particularly great, not particularly terrible. I like it on Bloody Queen. Um, also a pretty decent map for Wu Chang. Um, just okay. stay away from Shack, stay away from Factory, and chances <laughs> are you'll be all right. Um, so, yeah, um, the priestess was trying to hide there, and was just trying to run away from me, but I end up stopping this chase relatively quickly. Um, that was honestly kind of a waste of portals. Um, and I get a really early first down. So, um, there's been a lot of, um, stuff going around about, um, new buffs slash nerfs that they're bringing into the game, and I'm sure you've all probably heard about that already, too. Um, and, um, although I don't particularly like the Bloody Queen one, um, uh, the, the nerf that they're going to be giving to Bloody Queen. Um, it's not going to be... It, it's not going to make her non-viable at all. Like, she's still going to be a good hunter to use. Um, <clears throat> if they did something like increase her cooldown for like 6 seconds instead of 3 seconds, that would have been more game-changing because that would have changed the amount of time it would take for you to... Um, place down two mirrors, but being that they're mm -hmm. decreasing both the um, mirror time and increasing the cooldown time, they kind of counteract each other. It just makes it so you need to be more precise with your mirrors and be more intentional about where you're placing them. Um, so all this does is it makes mirror placement much more important. So like um, mirrors like that um, that I just did there wouldn't be particularly fantastic after the nerf, but, um, will I still play Bloody Queen? Um, chances are the answer is going to be yes. Um, is she going to be good? Yes, she's still going to be good. So, um, and we still don't know yet exactly what they're going to bring into the game, um, uh, how much of these nerfs they're actually going to bring into the game. Will they keep some of it? Will they um, keep some of it to a lesser extent? We don't. We don't really know right now. But anyways, that's that's like my two cents on um, what's going on in the game. I know a lot of um, high tier players have already released videos on them. You can go um, listen to their commentary on that as well. But if you've been paying attention to what's been going on in the screen, I got um, I eliminated the priestess. Um, and now I'm finding someone else to chase right now. And the doc's not a terrible target. I, the only target I would have been unhappy chasing would have been the uh, mercenary there. Um, and I was planning to do a swing there, but I ended up just timing that poorly. And um, most high tier docs now are using um, broken windows, um, with her ability that just makes it so that, um, that just makes her, um, have more kiting potential, mm -hmm. and the buffs that they're giving to her will increase her kiting potential, um, even more. I think it was like, what, she was kind of feeling quarters or something as well, um, just so that she can get another extra hit and chase, but um, overall, I think this will be a good change to Doc. Um, allow her to have more kiting potential, which is really nice. Um, so one Cypher left, got the Doc down. Um, so now um, I'm going to chair the dock and now I'm looking the number one priority when there's one cipher left is to disrupt the ciphers 
a lot of mistake that a lot of players do is they um, mm-hmm. don't disrupt the cipher, the last cipher. It ends up popping, like they'll camp or something, mm-hmm. and the rescuer will get down, but it doesn't really matter a whole lot because the survivor's going to be rescued anyway. Um, and, and then the borrowed time sets off, and then it kind of undoes all your work. So at this point, I'm going to teleport to that last cipher since that's most important. It's already been primed. He was waiting for that hit. Um, and the lucky guy ended up getting double boost there. Double boost is extremely good. Um, and it's like when you got the, the broken window, or not broken windows, um, the, the acceleration effect from the hit along with the borrow time boost, it ends up allowing you to speed across the map really, really fast. Oh, oh, I remember this match. This is, this is really great at the end. So I end up um, placing my meter here. I'm like, uh, I know they're at the gate. Let's see what they're doing. And I show the uh, um, mercenary here. He was just healing, and I hit him right as the gate was opened. So, um, yeah, I'm forcing Doc out the door so they don't have the potential for a rescue. And I end up getting the win there when it undoubtedly should have been a draw. If the mercenary had been rushing out that door, it was going to be a draw. Um, so that's just a little example of how, um, if you have the chance to get out, you really should be getting out, especially if it's, um, characters like Wu Chang, Feaster, Bloody Queen, um, mm-hmm. uh, other hunters that have potential to hit from a distance. Um, but anyways, so now we're on to the second match of this video, which is on Red Church. Um, I end up coming across the mercenary, but I don't really care because the mercenary just wastes a bunch of time with his elbow pads. And the prisoner is the ideal target here, and I find him, so that's really lucky. Um, so now, um, I feel like that should have been a hit, but whatever. Um, there's the prisoner here trying to outrun me here. Um, and now there's, um, I'm going to get this down relatively quickly here. So the prisoner is going to vault this window. I'm going to follow him. And once this cooldown's done, I'm going to place a mirror right so that it's lined up with that entrance there. And I'm going to get a hit right there. So... That's a pretty good that's a pretty good pace for a good first down. And I had no idea the dungeon was there, but I was like, oh hey, that's nice. So now I've got prisoner in dungeon. Um so that's really, really convenient. Um so what you wanna do when you're at the dungeon is you wanna go straight to the top, look behind you as you're going up, because you don't know if survivors will try to jump in behind you. I've had that happen to me a couple of times until I learned I need to look backwards when I walk up. So the mercenary, as expected, is trying to come for the save. Um, and I end up um, going over here. I end up missing a couple of hits there. I was trying to do the jump thing where you hit without recoil and I didn't end up getting those. But the mercenary is around the chair. The chair is past halfway. That's important. Um, because now if I hit the um, prisoner and end up downing him, and it doesn't really matter a whole ton what he does because um, he's going to be dead on chair. So the mercenary is trying to block the doorway, but the doorway is too large for him to do something like that. Um, that was really close to being a hit. Um, but I'm gonna go after the prisoner here. And see, hits like that, post nerf, that would have been really close. And if I did end up getting the hit, I definitely wouldn't have been able to teleport afterward like I did. So, that's gonna make, um, 
things that I do, like hitting survivors and then rotating the mirror, that's going to make that um, still effective, but relatively less effective. It's going to turn it to more like um, once you rotate the mirror, you got to um, you got to teleport to it right away instead of going for a hit there. And I end up getting the mercenary down, but I don't care about the mercenary. He can't he can't cipher rush. Hmm. So, and with two ciphers remaining, I gotta start looking more towards what ciphers are there. So that's wiggling there. I thought a survivor was there. Turns out it was just the prisoner's thing. Um, and he ended up switching it there, so I couldn't disable it. Um, I have a feeling at this point someone's going to save the, or to, going to heal the mercenary. So I'm just gonna make my way back to the church. And he ends up being healed. Now I could have ended up just like leaving him on a chair just to get some progress done, but um, I end up finding a target that's higher priority, which is the thief. Oh, and there's something you can do to counter thief. Just blink right up to him. Um, I've done that a couple of times when I got a thief. If I if there's a thief in match, it's really nice to bring blink because that kind of negates the effect of his flashlight it kind of it, it really hard counters that um so now i'm looking again for ciphers being decoded and i'm gonna go over here take a couple of screens but ultimately that last cipher is more important uh, uh, because if they get that cipher pop, then or if they get that cipher primed, then they're going to be able to get a really consistent. Um, they're going to get a really consistent cipher pop, which will allow them all to get back up, and the rescue would have been made a lot easier. So I'm still going to chase the perfumer. The perfumer is at max health, but I do get a hit there. And that's going to make this a lot easier. And I know I have to rush this down. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't get this down really quickly, then um, uh, then that last cipher is going to pop. So now I'm taking the perfumer to the chair. Still, my number one priority is disrupting the last cipher. Because I don't want borrowed time to kick in. So, I'm looking around which cipher is being done, and now I'm trying to keep both um, the rescue and the rescue at bay, but um, the mercenary ends up getting that right there. And um, that, was a, that was a mistake on the mirror. I didn't mean to place the mirror like that, it just kind of ended up that way. Um, but I do end up down in the perfumer, and I know that the mercenary is going to be heading the gate. So I'm making my way there, disrupt the mercenary there, and I didn't know where the mercenary was at, but he ends up, I see the elbow pad, I don't worry about it. So... Um, at this point, tonight isn't going off. I know that nobody's coming for the rescue, so I'm going to switch to teleport here. I mean, the, um, the thief is already out the door, and that just leaves the mercenary. And I want to get the down on the mercenary because one has already escaped. Um, so I need this to get the win. So... Now that he placed that pallet, I don't need to worry about breaking it. He's got nowhere to go. I'll get him eventually because there's no way he can transition anywhere either. So I'm just going to go around here until um, he ends up making a mistake like that. So, yeah, those are the games. Well, if you guys enjoyed that video, please um, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And let me know in the comment section below what you thought. Thanks for watching.